Good morning. I'm here with uh, Eva de Boer, KPMG's Global Special Advisor on Climate Change and Sustainability. Eva, welcome. Welcome to New Zealand. Thank I you. I understand this is your second time here. I, uh, I know it's just a whirlwind trip for you, but um, I hope you've uh, managed to get out and see a little bit of the country so and so far. A little far. bit, yes. Thank yeah? you. Yeah, great. Well, um, many people probably remember you as the uh, Executive Secretary of the United Nat Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, responsible for uh, a lot of climate change policy. Um, perhaps, um, for those who don't know the rest of your background, would you mind giving us a, a brief sort of, um, bio on your experience and, and particularly how you came to join KPMG? I've probably spent about the last 20 years working on sustainability-related issues. Mm -hmm. um, worked a lot on on housing and urban issues in mm -hmm. developing countries, um, working for the UN actually, then moved on to work for the Dutch government, first okay. on housing issues and then on environment issues, mainly in a European context. In, in Europe we're now in the situation where most of the environmental policy is made by the European Commission in Brussels, um, about 80% of environmental policy, so I spent about 15 years working on that with an increasingly strong focus on, on climate change. Mm -hmm which I find to be um, a fascinating mm. topic, incredibly mm. complicated, but also very important, I think, and mm. with some potentially very major impacts. Um, then I moved on and spent four years uh, heading the UN climate change negotiations, mm -hmm. um, and left that about two years ago to join KPMG. Basically, the motivation there was that I worked on sustainability issues for government, for the United Nations, and I felt that the missing piece was, was the private sector, which is actually where the bulk of the solutions need to come from. Mm -hmm. So I actually very much enjoy the, uh, the very direct opportunity that KPMG mm. offers to work together with companies on mm. what their sustainability mm. agenda is. Mm. Fantastic. So you've been with the firm a couple of years now. Has there been any um, sort of highlights, I suppose, of your time over those last couple of years, or any, any key insights you could sort of give us? I think what I probably enjoy um, most is the incredible openness of the organisation, the, the, the willingness of people to understand the issues that, that I'm working on, the mm. issues that I'm confronted with, and see to what extent they're relevant from their perspective and that's mm -hmm. incredibly important because sustainability is not something that uh, I think by and large you should focus on as a standalone issue. No. It's very important to, to link it to what colleg colleagues are doing in the energy sector, in the mining sector, on infrastructure, as well as to translate the relevance of sustainability to what it means from a tax perspective. So for example, green taxes or subsidies and grants uh, to translate it into advisory. How mm. can we as a company help uh, how can we help companies to understand the relevance of sustainability for uh, for their business uh, point of view? And then audit, of course. Mm. Audit has always mm. been, uh, audit and assurance have always been the, the bread and butter, I think, of KPMG's yeah. sustainability business. Mm. The challenge there is to see to what extent you can really use audit as a forward-looking in instrument, yep. whereas I think financial audits tend to look back. Sure. Uh, I think sustainability audits look much more forward yep. and help companies to understand their operating environment, the challenges that they'll be facing in the future and how they should adjust their operating models to that. Yeah. Um, in terms of your, um, you obviously meet with a lot of the business leaders um, globally around the world, what, what are you seeing in terms of some of their sustainability priorities? I mean, um, what's coming on the, uh, more and more on the agenda, I suppose, from those business leaders' perspective? Well, generally across the board, um, I see businesses integrating sustainability into their business models. Perhaps in the past there was a, a stronger focus on corporate social responsibility, mm -hmm. so things that you did with society, with, um, with the environment in which you're, you're living and operating. And increasingly companies are beginning to look at sustainability as being core to their business models. So how can they, how does sustainability play a role in terms of creating growth? Can they put more sustainable products into, into new markets? Uh, how does sustainability relate to the efficiency of a company, to the efficiency of its operating model? For example, can they reduce cost around energy, waste, water, transportation, etc.? And thirdly, sustainability is increasingly becoming um, a, a reputational issue, mm. Mm. Uh, with companies needing to be very aware, aware of how they uh, how they're operating mm. and, and, and how they're perceived. So it, it's very much, I think evolving to be at the heart of, uh, of many, many business models. Um, I just want to talk a little bit now about KPMG's Expect the Unexpected report, which was released uh, 
earlier in 2012, uh, and that really talks to some of those mega forces which are going to be impacting all businesses over the next um, 20 years. And some of the statistics, I suppose, are a little bit scary in terms of the expectations around food security, water security, increasing <laughs> needs for energy, all of those things creating a really complex um, scenario of potential future opportunities and risks. Um, just looking at some of those uh, mega forces, um, what would you say, and, and I appreciate you've, you've only been in New Zealand for a few days, and, and, and um, but what would you say are the, some of the key messages for New Zealand business that they should take from, from the, uh, the mega forces report? Well, we're confronted with a number of global ch challenges on climate change, on energy prices, on energy security, on material scarcity, on water scarcity, on food scarcity at a time when the global population is growing very fast, increasingly uh, urbanizing and becoming more well-off, which you could argue is a, is a good thing. Mm. So I think it's really important for New Zealand businesses to understand how those global trends are likely to impact their particular sector of the economy mm -hmm. uh, and to understand that both in terms of, of risk and opportunity. Risk in the sense that those global mega forces, those trends, can impact uh, a company either directly or through policy, but secondly also understand them as an opportunity to put new products and services uh, into a market given a, given a changing policy environment and, and given changing consumer behavior. So understanding is important translating that understanding uh, into the business strategy from both a risk and an opportunity perspective mm. is really key. Okay. Now, New Zealand, um, just looking at the mega forces report in terms of wealth and the developing nations, certainly a lot of growth in that middle income, a, a middle class, I suppose, in the developing countries. So, um, in terms of those economies, the um, Indonesia's and China's and India's, New Zealand companies tend to have a bit of a focus there, um, mm -hmm. seeing it as a, as a really growth engine uh, for, for the world economy. Um, how, are, how are those economies addressing sustainability? In, in different ways. Mm. Um, I, th I think China has very clearly understand that it fundamentally needs to change its model for economic growth, so the current Chinese five-year plan focuses very much on industrial efficiency, on reducing waste, on enhancing the sustainability of cities, uh, on, on recycling, so that in, in China you see that they're really beginning to drive this uh, throughout the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, story in Indonesia is a different one, yeah. uh, massive natural resources of yeah. course. Um, to be honest, the government talking more about sustainability than they're actually uh, doing, yeah. doing anything about it. Sure. Um, uh, but at the same time, Many of the companies that are looking for growth in Indonesia are global companies that have a global reputation sure. at stake and sure. will need to be very, very careful how they, they operate in that environment as mm. well. Mm. So I think generally, uh, China aside perhaps, the, 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 the consciousness in many Asian developing countries is, is lower, mm. but the investments there are being driven by international corporates that, that need to understand um, the... the um, the environment that they'll be they'll be operating in and what's at stake for them. Yes, yeah. um, I guess in terms of New Zealand, um, we we place a lot of emphasis on our clean green image. Um, we we have a lot of space and, and um, I guess a population that's growing, but uh, we're not in, we're not um, a very intensive population, intense country. Um, I guess just from your short time in New Zealand, uh, what would you say are some of our um, risks, challenges and opportunities, I suppose, in terms of sustainability. Just, just thinking about our, um, our, our branding and I guess and our global reputation. Well, having a lot of space doesn't automatically mean that you're using it terribly well. No, that's true. Um, yeah. So I think there, there are, um, well, for example, in the agricultural sector where you're branding yourself very much as, uh, as being green and being, being sustainable, I think companies need to be really sure that that's uh, that's a true story and not mm. a bubble that can uh, that, that can be pricked very easily mm. through some of those new media that we were talking about mm. uh, earlier on. Um, I would say that by and large, New Zealand is is very well positioned mm -hmm. in in terms of those mega forces. Uh, you you do not have a water issue by and large. You have huge quantities of, uh, of hydropower. You have a, a massive natural resource. And the question, I suppose, is uh, 
to what extent can you draw the, can you translate that even further uh, into opportunities for New Zealand companies? I, mm. I, I, so I would say on the balance, climate change aside, that on balance um, this probably represents more of a, an opportunity Continuity. than a threat. Okay. And, and thinking about that in terms of some of our some of our local businesses who are sort of yet to think about a sustainability journey, or yet to think about sustainability as being strategically relevant to them, what would be sort of your, your key message to, to those organisations? Um, my first point would be to, to understand, yeah. to understand uh, what environmental impacts might be coming your way, what policy impacts might be coming your way, uh, what, what change you're likely to be confronted with in terms of regulation or, or consumer behaviour. So my first point would be understand. My, my second point would be to, to integrate, so to really ensure that you have sustainability integrated into your business model, perhaps from a perspective of growth by mm -hmm. putting new products and services into the market, um, or from the point of view of, of operational efficiency, what mm -hmm. can you do to use water, energy more sensibly, how can you reduce waste, how can you be uh, more effective in your supply chain. And thirdly, to think about any reputational risks that you might be might be running, to turn that that understanding uh, into a into a business model that mm. that positions the company more strongly in that context. Okay, fantastic. Well, Eva, um, that's it. I think um, thank you very much for your time. It's been a uh, pleasure to have you here, and uh, I hope you enjoyed your whirlwind stop in New Zealand. And um, we hope to see you again some stage in the future. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Thank you.